So we've all been inside, right? We've been tinkering with our cars, getting them ready for that first drive of the summer. Well, not me, buddy. Not me. I've been going stir crazy, making videos in my empty garage. I haven't turned a wrench in months, and baby boy, I need a project. Something big. Something I can really sink my teeth into. Like an engine swap. Yeah, man, that's just the ticket. An engine swap. But what engine should I choose? Something turbo? Something kooky? No! <laughs> No, 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 the choice is obvious. You can't spell Chevrolets without these two letters. A sleeper without them is just Eeper. It's been a long time coming, and we're finally gonna do it, boy. You asked for this, and you should be more careful about what you ask for. <laughs> is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the LS engine, mother <sighs> That's fun. You can't talk about the LS and not mention the Corvette. And thanks to our friends at Omaze, you can now enter for your chance to win a 2020 Corvette Stingray. That's a C8, baby, with taxes and shipping included. And if that's not good enough, you also get $20,000 cash for some sick wheels or some new suspension or just like gas. That's right. You don't need to get your hair in check. You heard me correctly, my friend. You could win a brand new 2020 Corvette Stingray Z51. That's 495 buff hearses, a sub three second zero to 60, and all you have to do is hop over to amaze.com slash donut and enter for your chance to win. And best of all, in my personal opinion, when you donate to enter, you're also supporting the Ronald Reagan Medical Center at UCLA. Now this place this is very special to me because as a lot of you guys know, I had a heart attack about six months ago and this is the place that I went to get cardiac rehab after my heart attack. So it's a great cause and you might win an awesome car and some cash to boot. So hurry up and head over to amaze.com slash donut and enter now. <laughs> this thing is very, very cool, dude. What do owners of Volvo 240s, Resto Mod muscle builds, and FDRX7s with blown engines have in common, besides great taste? They've all been asked the same question. You gonna LS swap that thing? Yeah, hey, uh, you gonna LS swap that thing? This week, we're not talking about a car. We're talking about engines, baby. And not just any piston pusher. This mill is one of General Motors' greatest legacies. A proven possessor of reliability, power, and potentials. We're gonna cover everything about the Chevy LS. What do all the numbers mean? Which ones came in which cars? Which one should you swap into your 240? So let's turn the clocks back a bit. Chapter one, humble small block beginnings. One sunny day in the spring of 1992, the top brass at GM gathered at the company's secretive test site, the Milford Proving Grounds outside of Detroit, Michigan. They were there to figure out what nearly 50 years of V8 engineering had come to in the roaring early 90s. Like the chart-topping song by Boys to Men that year, was this going to be the end of the road for traditional pushrod small block V8s? Cause we've come to the end of the road. No, I can't let go. You belong to me. Okay. You belong to you. You belong to me. A blind test was arranged. Two nearly identical black C4 Corvettes. These cars were prepped for a day of bashing on GM's massive open skid pad, dubbed the Black Lake. That is so like Norwegian metal. They weren't entirely identical, however. Corvette A was equipped with an updated take on the classic GM pushrod V8, meaning that there's one camshaft in the middle pushing on rods that actuate valves, while Corvette B was rocking an overhead cam design, meaning that there are two camshafts above each cylinder turned via a timing belt. It's more modern and much more complex. They did burnouts and drifty things for like 12 hours and then started discussing which vet felt 
the best and the most thrilling. Now the executives really dug how one of the Corvettes pulled as soon as they put their foot down. Fast responding, good old American twerk spurs. Reception for the other vet wasn't as glowing. The revs had to be held pretty high to stay in the power band. Yeah, it was really fun. It sounded really good, but it was not as immediately thrilling. They preferred engine was in Corvette A. It was a simpler pushrod V8, not the fancier new dual overhead cam motor. So then and there, it was settled. From here on out, GM would continue engineering and developing the pushrod V8. Chapter two, how to create something entirely new. Let's take a second and clarify all this Gen business. Gen one covers all 350-ish cubic inch small blocks built from the mid 50s all the way up until the 90s. Now Gen two engines are the 5.7 liter V8s built briefly in the early to mid 90s known as the LTs. All right, so back to the narrative. Behind the scenes in the mid to late 90s, GM was looking to carry on pushrod technology into the 21st century. The next Chevy V8 needed to hit several important important but seemingly contradictory goals. With ever tightening emission standards, improving fuel economy was a must, but the new engine still had to beat the competitors in both horsepower and reliability. Now that is a tall order. And I should know about a tall order because my mama made one when she called up God. She said, hello God, I'd like a son. Make him about 6'3 and handsome as hell. God was like, anything for my favorite angel, Liz. My mom? She's an angel. So who would GM bring in to sew the whole thing together? Well, a drag racing legend, of course. Ed Koner, GM's powertrain VP of engineering at the time was a V8 savant who also held a freaking NHRA drag racing record. That rules. He was picked by the executive director of GM powertrain, Tom Stevens, and entrusted with the job of developing the Gen 3 V8 with one catch. It could share no parts with the previous Gen motors. Oh, hey there, Ed. Here's a couple uh, key traits for this new uh, engine we was talking about the other day. It has to get decent mileage. Yup, yup, okay. Uh, be cheaper and easier to produce than what we've made in the past, don't you know? And be able to go under the hood of essentially any GM vehicle. Yep, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh. Including front wheel drive, don't you know? <laughs> it's a tall order, boss, but just like when James Pumphrey's mom, Liz, hit up God and asked for a son that was 6'3", I think I can do it. Him and his team, who were called the Super Six, went forth and came up with something quite special indeed. Chapter three, a new generation has born. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, announcing to the world the brand spanking new Gen 3 small block V8 from Chevy, the LS1. First the budding under the hood of the then brand new C5 Chevy Corvette, the LS1 was an engineering masterpiece. The LS1 made around 350 hertz per in the Corvette. <laughs> Not a big increase over the previous Gen 2 engine, but the LS1 was much lighter because it was all aluminum, baby. It had way better cooling properties, making it more heat efficient and was stronger than the old LTs. And the engineers even said that the stock OEM aluminum heads were more on par with aftermarket performance heads of the past. That's what you get when you let hot rodders build a car for you. Good job, Chevy. The LS1 was an instant hit, but it wasn't long before GM offered something with, uh, I believe it's pronounced um, a bit more oomph, because why the frick not? It was also time to start confusing people because they didn't call the second LS the LS2. That would make too much freaking sense. Debuting in the C5 Z06, the second LS motor was called the LS6. That makes sense, Z06, LS6. Where's all the confusion? Just sit tight, buddy. It gets real crazy later on. The LS6 sported a healthy boost in power while sharing basically the same architecture as the LS1. The main improvements were a bigger intake manifold, higher compression ratio, a more aggressive camshaft, and some goodies to improve on-track reliability. Initially, it punched out 385 hertz and 385 pound-feet of torque. That's right, a perfect 
perfect horse pork, but later on they bumped it up to 400 even. They also put this motor in the Cadillac CTSV, AKA my favorite caddy. And while other manufacturers were spending buku buccaneros on more complex overhead cam engines, GM was proving that old fashioned tech could still get her done, but they had to keep pushing the limits. It was time for the next generation of LS engines to take charge and do the old push rod proud. Chapter four, building upon greatness. The new Gen 4 Chevy V8 now in encompassing more modern technology like variable valve timing, active fuel management, flex fuel capability, also known as E85, baby. The first place that this tech made an appearance was in the third LS engine, the six liter LS2, because two comes after six. I mean, yeah, I could see why it's confusing. <laughs> Now this bad boy was dropped under the hood of the short-lived and pretty honestly sick yet kind of boring looking fifth gen Pontiac GTO in 2005. It was also in the even sicker Chevy Trailblazer SS in the positively most sick Saab 97X Aero. It also made 400 or so horsepower and torque. You know what would be cool? A big front wheel drive car with a V8 under the hood. Yeah, GM thought so too. The LS4 was designed to fit in cars sideways. And I'm gonna tell you what, it went in a bunch of big old beefy boys in the 2000s. Pontiac Grand Prix GXP, the Chevy Impala SS, and the Monte Carlo SS, just to name a few. This bad boy pumped out 303 Hersey's and 323 twerks. A year after the LS4, came the hand-built LS7 introduced in 2006. This seven liter masterpiece is capable of stomping out 500 hertz and 407 pound-feet of torque. When shoved into its main platform, the C6 Corvette Z06, it'll do zero to 60 in a scant 3.5 seconds. <laughs> Oh, and did I mention that this engine won Le Mans? My buddy Felipe did an episode of Bumper to Bumper on it a while ago on the actual Corvette C6R that won the legendary endurance race. Speaking of bad assery, you might have seen this next one plastered all over the pages of Muscle Car magazines a couple years back. That's right, I'm talking about the LSX. This clever girl pumps out 627 hertz per and 586 pound feet of twerks. What's even wilder is apparently this thing can hold as much as 2,500 horsepower. That's insane. Like, what do you even need that for? Driving to the moon? Moving right along, next up is the LS3. This scrappy little fella came out in 2008 and is a direct improvement on the LS2. Good for cool 436 hertz and 424 pound feet of twerks. And it came in the C6 Corvette. The C6 ZR1 had a big old blower on top, making it an LS9, and it made 638 hertz and 604 pound feet of twerks. And I'm pretty sure that that's all of them. That is everything they came in. Whew. Chapter five, now it's not an LS anymore. It's called the LT again, AKA, give me a break, GM. And now we've come to the current crop of pushrod GM V8 engines, the fifth gen, gen five V8s. These puppies aren't called LSs anymore. Chevy has reused the nomenclature yet again by calling them LTs. And they sure ain't your uncle's old LT motor either. The big difference over the previous gen four LSs, direct injection, baby, that's right. They've now officially combined old school push rod design with direct injection. Why is this a good thing? Well, it makes them much more tunable and improves fuel economy, mo power and mo mileage, baby. The new LT1 has 6.2 liters of displacement and made 455 hertz per and 455 to 460 pound feet of twerks in the C7 Corvette and the current gen Camaro SS. But do you know what my absolute favorite version is? The new LT2, the absolute peak of all GM V8 technology wrapped up in a 6.2 liter lump and specially designed to sit behind the driver in the brand spanking new 2020 c8 corvette the numbers 
490 horses, 465 pound feet of torque. Not bad, Chevy, not bad. And the thing costs less than 60 grand. And this is just the first one. There's been all kinds of rumors and confirmations. It's hard to keep up. It's gonna be sick. Chevy has been very successful with this kind of harebrained scheme of just throwing the latest tech into a good old fashioned, simple American push rod B8. What can't they do? Chapter six, LS swap the world. Okay guys, it's been a long road, but we're finally here, all right? Now we all know what kind of LS engines are out there. But now it's time to break out the big guns. The reason why all walks of tuning life love this American motor. It's possibly the best engine swap engine ever. Used LSs are super plentiful and can be had for super cheap and so can their new parts. The LS is the gift that keeps on freaking giving. People even put their parts like their throttle bodies and coil packs on other cars. Here's the benefits. Because LS engines are push rod engines, they've got smaller cylinder heads than overhead cam engines. Meaning you've got a lot of displacement that doesn't take up a lot of space. Wait is also very crucial here. LSs can often weigh around the same as or even less than some of the iconic engines that they replace. An LS3 crate motor is around 420 pounds, dude. And a 13B rotary is over 400 pounds. The original 2JZ GTE from the Supra weighs 650 pounds. With all their low end torque, LSs can push a car out of corners sooner or light up the rear tires easier. And they don't always need a bunch of revs to do it that's good for longevity keep it low keep it running and here's the thing the ls's didn't just come as an all aluminum high compression performance v8 a lot of ls's go by a confusing system of engine codes that are all iron block and came in pretty much every gm truck or SUV, which makes them very plentiful, very easy to find, and most importantly, very cheap. The fact that you can take a junkyard iron block LS out of a plain James Chevy Suburban and toss it in something completely different like a 240 or something is what makes it so amazing. I'm talking RX-7s, RX-8s, Supras, E30s, E36s, E46s, old Volvos, freaking old truck builds. The LS is maybe not the most exciting swap, but it is exciting and it just makes a lot of sense. And for those of you out there with deeper pockets, why not swap in a brand new LS3, LSX, or LT1. You don't have to go looking for crash Corvettes in the junk art. You can buy them literally from GM at walmart.com. The LS3's GM part number is 19257230. You can have a fully assembled, ready to swap engine delivered directly to your door in the same cart as toilet paper, literally. There's even a freaking festival devoted to it. Two of them, it's called LS Fest. It's like the burning man of cars, but with more nudity. I'm looking at you, Odie Bakchis. This engine has united all corners of the car world. It's brought together muscle car stars, drift freaks, track punks, Krankensteins, drag boys, time attack geeps, boost creeps, burnout wizards, and more. Everyone can nerd out together. So go out there, get one, and throw it into something that it don't belong in. Hey, more power, baby. More power, baby. Stickers. There's no better way to tell people how much more power you're dealing with than with a bunch of stickers that say Mo Power Baby. Barossa Mo Power Baby. Block Mo Power Baby. Oh, classic Mo Power Baby. Including my favorite one, Mo Power Baby on board to let the world know that you have a child and they are strong and buff. Mo power, baby! We're really excited about these stickers. They're available at donutmedia.com. Go get yourself some and subscribe to our mailing list so you don't miss any of the newest drops.
Thank you guys so much for watching Up to Speed and everything else on Donut. We upload a video every single day to make sure you don't miss anything. Hit that subscribe button. Follow Donut across social media at Donut Media. If this is your first Donut video, welcome. If it's your hundredth, welcome back. Follow me on Instagram at James Bumfrey to keep up with what we got going on here. I love you.